what's up you guys and welcome to Movie Talk. Today we're going to be doing yet another top 10. It is the top 10 favorite comedies. If you haven't seen any of the movies that I'm about to talk about, I highly, highly recommend that you do. So let's get started. Number 10, Meatballs. This is a very underrated Bill Murray film. Tripper is the head counselor at a budget summer camp called Camp North Star. In truth, he's young at heart and only marginally more mature than the campers themselves. Tripper befriends Rudy, a loner camper who has trouble fitting in. As Tripper inspires his young charges to defeat rival Camp Mohawk in the annual Olympic ceremony, Rudy plays matchmaker between Tripper and Roxanne, a female counselor of North Star. This film is a classic, extremely funny, and extremely entertaining. Number 9. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. By watching this film, I sh I'm pretty sure any kid could relate to who goes to school. Ferris Bueller has an uncanny skill at cutting classes and getting away with it. Intending to make one last duck out before graduation, Ferris calls in sick, borrows a Ferrari, and embarks on a one-day journey through the streets of Chicago. On Ferris's trail is high school principal Rooney, determined to catch him in the act. This movie is kind of like a tutorial video from a teenager. Like, how to get away with murder, so to speak. I'm paraphrasing, of course. But, uh, amazing film. Number eight, Weird Science. Definitely one of John Hughes' best films. Teen misfits Gary and Wyatt design their ideal woman on a computer, and a freak electrical accident brings her to life in the form of a lovely superhuman named Lisa. She outfits the boys in cool clothes, surprises them with a Porsche, and helps them stand up to the jerks, Ian and Max. But all the while, the boys must hide Lisa's existence from Chet, Wyatt's nightmare of a big brother. This is a very entertaining film, great director, uh, great cast, and the girl... Yes! She's bad party. <laughs> Number 7, Brewster's Millions. This movie wasn't received very well with the critics, but it's definitely a classic. After losing his position as a minor league pitcher, Montgomery Brewster learns his great uncle has left him $300 million. To inherit it, Brewster must spend $30 million in cash in 30 days under a complicated set of rules that forbid him from donating too much to charity or retaining any new assets when the period is up. Unable to share details about the will's odd conditions with anyone, Brewster sets out to spend his money as quick as possible. Come on, it's Richard Pryor and John Candy. Can't go wrong with that. Number six, Trading Places. Are you a fan of Eddie Murphy, Dan Aykroyd, and Jimmy Lee Curtis? Hey, Ash! Then this is your movie. Upper Crust Executive Lewis Winthorpe III and Down and Out Hustler Billy Ray Valentine are the subjects of a bet by successful brokers Mortimer and Randolph Duke. An employee of the Dukes, Winthorpe is framed by the brothers for a crime he didn't commit, with the siblings then installing the street-smart Valentine in his position. When Winthorpe and Valentine uncover the scheme, they set out to turn the tables on the Dukes. Very, very fun, entertaining film. Highly recommend it. You definitely should check this one out. Number five, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Classic film. Stacy Hamilton is a pretty but inexperienced teen interested in dating. Given advice by her uninhibited friend Linda Barrett, hey, yes! Stacy gets trapped in a love triangle with nice guy Mark Ratner and his more assured buddy Mike Damone. Meanwhile, Stacy's classmate Jeff Spicoli, who lives for surfing and being stoned, faces off against Mr. Hand, a strict teacher who has no time for the slacker's antics. This film has everything. Funny moments, hot moments, and even a cameo from a young Nicolas Cage. Definitely a must-see. Number four, The Jerk. This movie is really, really hard to explain, but let's try. Naven believes he was born a poor black child in Mississippi. He is, however, actually white. Upon figuring this out, he heads north to St. Louis to find himself. After landing a job at a gas station, Navin is excited to discover his name printed in the new phone book. This ratification of his existence leads him from one misadventure to another. As he invents gadgets, dodges bullets, joins the carnival, and seeks love in the arms of the beautiful Marie, Steve Martin is fantastic in this film. Definitely give it a look. Number three, The Blues Brothers. 
This movie takes a simple Saturday Night Live sketch and turns it into a classic feature film. After his release from prison, Jake reunites with his brother Elwood, collectively known as the Blues Brothers. Jake's first task is to save the orphanage the brothers grew up in from closing by raising $5,000 to pay back taxes. The two are convinced they can earn the money by getting their old band back together. However, after playing several gigs and making a few enemies, including the police, the brothers face daunting odds to deliver the money on time. This is definitely a classic comedy. has a lot of great songs in it. Uh, fun fact, you know, everybody loved the Blues Brothers. They had a lot of good music that they made together as Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi that they even required and begged that they made albums. So there's actually albums made by the Blues Brothers played by Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. So this is definitely a must-see film. Really good. Number two, The Man With Two Brains. I absolutely love this movie. When brilliant brain surgeon Dr. Michael Hafara 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 That's really exactly how his name is pronounced. His name is his last name is spelled H F U H R U H U R R Hafara When brilliant brain surgeon Dr. Michael Hafara accidentally hits gold digger Dolores Benedict with his car, he takes it upon himself to save her life using his own surgical technique. The two are soon married, but no sooner after the rings are on their fingers than the marriage begins to fall apart. While honeymooning, Michael is introduced to a recluse scientist, Dr. Alfred Necessiter, who practices some rather odd procedures. He falls in love with one of the scientist's brains and is able to communicate with it. He then tries everything he can to find the perfect wife. This is a great film through and through. It's, it's pretty rare to find, actually. It, uh, it went out of print years ago, but if you're lucky enough to find a copy of this on DVD or Blu-ray or wherever you can find it, highly recommend you check this out. It's a very good movie. Steve Martin is fantastic in this as well. Before we get to our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Caddyshack, Coming to America, Once Bitten, Beetlejuice, Coneheads, Uncle Buck, Clue, Dumb and Dumber, Tommy Boy, and Groundhog Day. And the number one pick is Young Frankenstein. This is definitely my favorite comedy of all time, hands down. Nothing can top it. In this Mel Brooks parody of Mary Shelley's tale of Frankenstein, respected medical lecturer Dr. Frederick Frankenstein learns that he has inherited his infamous grandfather's estate in Transylvania. Arriving at the castle, Dr. Frankenstein soon begins to recreate his grandfather's experiments with the help of servants Igor, Inga, and the fearsome Frau Blucher. <laughs> After he creates his own monster, new complications ensue with the arrival of the doctor's fiance, Elizabeth. This film is amazing. It's definitely a classic uh, for the whole family to enjoy. Um, this movie was made in 1974, but given that aspect ratio, the color, given the black and white tone to make it seem like an old 1930s kind of horror film, but it's, a, it's a hilarious movie. It's definitely got my kind of humor in it. You know, <laughs> I find humor in the dumbest stuff sometimes, but this movie is freaking hilarious. I've seen it in theaters. Um, my theater uh, at one point in time was actually playing classic films, and when I saw when I saw that they were actually playing Young Frankenstein, I just had to go see it. But uh, definitely give this movie a look. It's got an amazing cast. You got Gene Wilder, Peter Boyle, and directed by Mel Brooks. I mean, come on, that guy's made a, a bunch of great movies. Well, there you go, guys. There's my uh, top 10 favorite comedies. If you uh, have seen any of these movies I just mentioned, be sure to write them down in the comments below. I'd love to talk about them with you. Um, if you haven't seen any of these movies, you got some homework to do. Ash. Well, guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want some ATV merch, I'll put the link in the description below. And I'll see you guys next time on ATV.